Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one, you husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Man, oh man, those kids are in a hurry. And no wonder. They know Mom's serving a breakfast of swell-tasting Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. These ready-to-serve grains of premium wheat or rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Yes, wheat or rice shot from guns rarely hits the spot. Don't miss out tomorrow morning. Enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice. Or Quaker puffed wheat. It was a dark night in midwinter. The sky was completely clouded over, and the hills loomed menacingly around the valley. Not a light showed in any of the buildings that made up the wilderness trading post, but only the factor, Leif Wilson, and his son, Ted, were asleep. The Indians in their cabins were watching the hills. Two hours before dawn, they saw a tongue of flame shoot up toward the sky from the top of the highest ridge. Then suddenly the flame was gone, and the night was blacker than ever. The Indians left their cabins, all their belongings packed on their backs, and started marching toward the western ridge. A heavy snow began to fall and drew a curtain over their departure. Their tracks were blotted out. The post was silent. At sunrise, Leif and Ted woke up. They realized at once that something was wrong. Something had happened to the post. What was the reason for this unnatural quiet? Funny, isn't it, Pa? It sure is. You suppose the Indians are all sticking to their cabins because of the snow? It isn't like them. I don't even hear anything from the cook shed. What's the matter with Miyaku? Uh, We'll take a look. Come on. It's nearly 8 o'clock. Miyaku's always ringing the bell for breakfast by this time. Something's wrong. The two men left their sleeping quarters and walked through the store. Leif unbarred the front door. (laughs) Seen through the snow, the buildings around the store were only dim blurs. The snow on the ground was untracked. There was no sign of a human being. I don't know what to make of it. Miyaku! There was no answer. Suppose they've all lit out? They must have. But where? Gone to their village for a shindig, maybe. It's the wrong time of year for shindigs. Well, that's about the only place it... Oh. What's the matter? There's a note on the door. Well, I'll be... A single sheet of paper was held in place by a knife. (coughs) Leif pulled out the knife and started to read the note as he stepped back inside the store and closed the door. What does it say? All Indian come home. No work, white man. You bring all gun, bullets, to Big Pine on Ridge before sundown or post burn. It's signed Taranga. Taranga? I never heard of him. An Indian who can read and write, Pa? Taranga's smart. Well, who is he? He was one of the leaders of the rebellion. He came up here after it failed, and he made trouble among the Indians for years. But I haven't heard of him in a long time. I thought he was dead. He wants guns. Yes. He wants to stage another rebellion. He's probably talked to not his peaceful tribe into going on the warpath. We ought to get word to Dawson. There's a northwest mounted there, and they got troops, too. There's only one way out of the valley, and that's through the pass. Taranga has it guarded by now. Well, I could make it over the ridge on foot. The ridge is guarded, too. Yeah, but it's snowing. I could get past any guards, Pa. I won't let you try it, son. But what are we going to do? Just stay here and let them burn us out? No. Wait. You're not going to give him the guns? Of course not. Once he has those, there'll be no stopping him. We're going to stay right here. We have enough ammunition and food to last for six months. This building's as good as a blockhouse, and we'll defend it just like it was one. Pa... 
Maybe we can do that during the day. But what about at night? We'll take turns standing guard. Now, sooner or later, the word will get to Dawson about what's going on, and they'll send us help. I don't see how word will get there. I still think you'll let you me try don't the... You do know He hates white men. You'd be tortured if you fell into his hands. Well, we're staying right here, son. How about some breakfast? Okay. I'll get some. Oh, uh, wait. What's the matter? You're not going to the mess cabin. There's food in the storeroom. We'll use the stove here. Well, he gave us until sundown. I don't trust him at all. Oh, it's snowing. Nobody could shoot us from the ridge. Yes, it's snowing. So we don't know how close they are. Uh, break out some stores. Okay, Paul. Listen, Ted. I hear him. Hey, those aren't our dogs. No. There's a dog team coming in. Uh, two men, Ted. They're white men. Oh, good. We got reinforcements. Are they trappers or just travelers? Can't see any pelts on the sled. Ho, ho, ho. Howdy. Howdy. Better get in here fast. That's what we aim to do. Just close the door after you. Now put some more wood in the stove. We don't aim to stay long. We want some supplies. You better settle down. What's that? You came through the pass, didn't you? How'd you figure that? It's the only way into the valley. You... You mean that we got to go back through it to get out of here? Right, and I want to... Then let's have some bacon and beans and make it fast. You'd better listen to me. The Indians around here are on the warpath. I don't know whether the name means anything to you or not, but Tarang is leading them. They let you into the valley, but they won't let you out. We're not as scared of Indians, mister. Just rustle those supplies. I told you we should have taken the other... Shut up! Did you hear me, mister? Move! Bacon and beans! You'll be shot or captured if you try to get back through the pass. That's our business. I won't give you any supplies. Now, look, there's a note we found pinned up on the door of the store this morning. Mister, you're covered. What? And no more talk. Up with your hands. You sound like a crook. All I want from you is bacon and beans. All right. Ted, bring in a case of beans and a slab of bacon. Who's that you're calling to? Uh, My son. He's in the store. Get in there, Al. Make him hurry. Sure. Even if you are a crook, I've got to warn you. Forget it. Unless you're running away from the gallows, you'd do better to let the law catch up with you than be taken prisoner by Taranga. How would you like to be burned at the stake? Don't make me laugh. I know you can Indians. But Taranga doesn't belong here. He came up from the south after the big rebellion. Read that note on the counter. Hey, I think you're on the level. I am. Read it. Let's see here. Uh, sounds like he means business. He does. Just the same There's that... Nobody that... out here, Ben, but I'm bringing the supplies. Nobody out there? Ted! There's nobody here. But he's gone. He's trying to make it. Make it where? To Dawson to get help. But he'll never get through the pass or over the ridge. Please, let me go after Stay him. Stay where you are. No. Shoot if you want. I've got to stop him. Will you hold up and listen? Well, you're not a bad guy. My partner and I will go after him. We'll send him back. Why, you now hurry up with those supplies, Al. I got him right here. Go on, load him on the sled. Open the door. Right. There. Well, you said that you... I said it, and I mean it. We'll catch your son before he gets to the ridge, and we'll send him back. After we get through the pass, we'll stop at the first wake cabin and leave word about the fix that you're in. You'll never get through. We've got to take a chance on that. You were right about the law being after us. It's a Mountie named Preston. We can't be far behind. But I'd rather take a chance on the Indians than on him. Come on, Ben. I got the sled turned around. Climb on board. I'll ride him back. Mush! Push on! Mush! It was still snowing as Sergeant Preston headed into the pass. King was working in harness, and in spite of the snow, the trail scent was easy to follow. But now the wind sweeping down from the ridge brought a new scent. There were men up there, and King slackened his pace. He looked back at his master and barked. What is it, boy? Hold up on the ridge, King. Sled dogs go straight ahead, though. Can't be the men we're after. A shot, King. It came from the ridge. But someone in the valley was hit. I'm on harness, you boy. Up in front, fella. On, King! On! Ben and Al were nearing the valley opening of the pass when they heard the shot. Mush! Mush! And a few seconds later, they saw Ted's still form lying in the snow. Ben drove straight toward them. Ah, he's done for. Let's go on. Oh, we'll take a look at him. It's a waste of time. I'll decide that. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, I was right, wasn't oh, I? you're never right. He's wounded, but he isn't dead. Well, what are we going to do? Take him back to the post, of course. 
Whoever shot him has us in his sights right now. We can't. Can you be... see the pass? I know. Or the top of the ridge? No, but well, I'm... neither can I. A snow let up for just a second when that shot was fired. Right now, nobody can draw a bead on us from the ridge. It was a lucky shot. An unlucky one for us. He's only been wounded. Let him stay where no. he is. He'll come to and get back to the post himself. Listen, he'll never make it. Look, I've been plenty ordinary in my time, but I've never let a man die when I could save his life, and I'm not going to start now. I'll cut out the argument and give me a hand. Hey, there's somebody coming. I can hear him. A moment later, they could see King racing toward them through the falling snow, behind the team, and then the tall form of Sergeant Preston riding the sled. We're done for. It's Amani, it's Preston. Okay, we're done for. Now maybe you'll shut up. King! Who is it? The old man's son, the boy from the trading post. Bullet creased his temple. He's alive? Yeah. Who fired the shot? Not us. Probably an Indian. Came from the ridge. An Indian? The old man says we're on the war path. I'll look into that later. Aren't you going to arrest us? I'll take your guns right now, but our business can wait. Help me get this boy on my sled, Ben. Sure. Hey, Ben. The snow stopped. I can see the top of the ridge. There's Indians all along. Yeah. All right, Al. Get the sled headed back for the post. You going back? You fool! Get the sled turned around. Gee, la, gee! Unpink! Un! Shooting at we'll continue our story in just a moment. I am thinking of something. Can you tell me what it is? Gee, this sounds like a swell game. Can all of us play it? That's the idea, kids. You simply ask me questions. I'll answer right or wrong. And you see how quick you can guess just what it is I'm thinking of. Ready? Okay. Let's see. Uh, is it something famous? Right, Billy. We all know about it. Oh, gosh. Could you give us a hint? Just a little one? Well, I really shouldn't, but, uh... Well, it's good. You mean good to eat? Uh-huh. Real good. And good for you, too. Can you buy it in a grocery store? Sure can. And would it taste good for breakfast? It sure would. <laughs> Boy, I'll bet I know what it is you're thinking of. <laughs> Me too. Is it shot from guns? Correct. That's what makes it so crisp and tender. Oh, we got it. It's Quaker puffed wheat. And Quaker puffed rice. Kids, you hit the nail right on the head. I was thinking of Quaker puffed wheat <laughs> and Quaker puffed rice. <laughs> the swell tasting, ready to serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. And, fellas and girls, take a tip from me. Here's a breakfast worth thinking about. It's a bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, swimming in milk, and topped with your favorite fruit, like, say, sliced bananas. Man, oh, man, you'll say there's no beating this eating. From first to last delicious spoonful, wheat or rice shot from guns hits the spot. Remember, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice... Both swell kinds are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Remember, too, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Ask Mom to get the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. King urged the sergeant's team to its greatest speed as they raced across the valley toward the trading post. Un King! Un Ben and Al stayed as close behind as they could. At first, the Indian bullets spattered close, but as they drove on, the firing ceased, and the post was reached in safety. Un King! Un Husky! Un He's alive. He'll be all right as soon as we get his head bandaged. Uh, you want any help? No, oh, I'll carry him. Uh, this way, Sergeant. I'll show you where to put him, right over here. Ted was placed on his bed. And as the sergeant dressed his wound, Leif told him of Taranga's demand for guns and his threat to burn the post. The boy regained consciousness, and then when he had slipped into a deep sleep, the sergeant and Leif returned to the store. Ben had a pair of binoculars trained on the distant ridge. What do you see, Ben? Looks to be an Indian about every 50 yards. Huh? There's more right above the pass. So you found out that I was telling the truth. That you couldn't get through. Uh, we could have if the snow hadn't stopped. And the sergeant hadn't come along. Let's get our business settled. You know why I've been following him? Yeah, we're guilty. That's Porter's cash box over on the counter. And you're both under arrest. Now, I want to know how you stand as far as this situation goes. 
What do you mean? Will you fight with Leif and me to defend the store? You can count me in. You're going to let them have guns? They'll be fighting for their own lives, Leif. Any man can be trusted in a case like that. Aren't you going to try and get out of the valley and bring us some help? You think I'd have any chance? Well, no, I... I mean... Neither do I. What you mean is you'd feel more comfortable if I were out of the way. I know, Sergeant. I I feel more comfortable with you here, even if I'm arrested. I just figured somebody ought to go for help. There's only one of us who has a chance of getting through. Oh, not me. No, Al, not you. Come here, King. The dog? That's right. Where will you send him? I tell him headquarters. He'll know where to go. Headquarters? Why, that's all the way to Dawson. You could make it by nightfall. I'll write a note to the inspector. What will you ask for? Troops, Leif. It's a shame. The wilderness tribe has never made any trouble. They've never been led by Taranga before. How soon can they get here? This last snow wasn't heavy. The trail's hard packed underneath. They can use horses. Should be able to make it by tomorrow morning. Yeah, if King gets through. If King gets through. (laughs) The note was written and tied securely to King's harness. Then the front door was opened and the sergeant took the great dog's head in his hands. You understand, King? I want you to go to headquarters, boy. Headquarters. The inspector. As fast as you can. Go on, boy. I'm King! Like a silver arrow, King streaked toward the distant ridge. He understood his mission. He was carrying a message to headquarters, and he must reach there as quickly as possible. He knew the men on the ridge were enemies. There were many of them near the opening of the pass, and he swung away from it. He would try to cross the ridge where the slope was wooded, and the trees would give him protection. He had nearly reached the Indians at the opening of the pass when they saw him. They opened fire, but King never faltered, though he weaved back and forth to make himself as poor a target as possible. A flash of silver blending with the sparkling snow, and at last the cover of the trees was reached. Now he started to climb warily, reading each scent the wind brought him and keeping as far away from the men as he could. The summit of the ridge was bare. He would have to depend on his speed to carry him to safety on the other side. He broke from cover. Again the gun spoke. Too late. He was over the top and plunging down the far side with trees to hide and protect him once more. At the bottom of the ridge, he swung back to the trail and settled down to a steady, ground-devouring lope. Two hours later, he circled the little town of Gold Flats, and the frozen surface of the Klondike stretched ahead of him, leading straight to Dawson, his destination. Hour after hour he ran, his great muscles responding easily to the demands he made of them. The sun dropped low in the western sky and disappeared behind the distant hills. The early dusk of the Northland fell over the trail, and with it the sharp scent of danger came to King. Wolves! He saw them sweeping out of the forest toward him, but he never hesitated. His mission was to reach Dawson. This was no time to stand and fight. He must outrun the swift gray ghosts of the trail. It had been a long, hard run already, but his champion's heart responded to this fresh crisis. His stride lengthened. He hurled himself forward. He called on his last reserves. And slowly, little by little, he drew away from the pack. Even after they faded into the distance, King refused to slacken his pace. And at last, the lights of Dawson could be seen. Fifteen minutes later, he was scratching at the door of the inspector's cabin. Oh, boy, King, what's the matter? Where's the sergeant? Oh, you've had a hard run. What's wrong? What is it, boy? Oh, wait a minute, I see. It's a note. Taranga. The sergeant and three men against... But, King, you've come all the way from Wilderness Valley. Just wait until I get my pocket. A moment later, the inspector was hurrying down the main street of Dawson to the barracks where the troops were quartered. There he found the commanding officer of the detachment and laid the sergeant's note before him. You know what that name means, Captain? Taranga? I should think so. But it can't be the same one. It is, Captain. The rebellion was so long ago. He was the only one of the Indian chiefs who escaped. He came up here. Well, naturally, you've tried to capture him. Of course, but he was smart. He has a great reputation with the Indians. They think of him as one of their finest warriors. And there isn't a tribe that isn't proud to take him in and hide him. Hmm. He's changed a great deal if he's content to hide. He isn't, not for long. Sooner or later, he always makes trouble. That's why we must catch him now, Captain. All right. How many men do we need? As many as you have. A full troop. Right. And we can take the sergeant's word that the trail is passable for horses. Yes, this is the first snow in a long while. Uh, It should take us about six hours to get there. At best. What's the valley like? Completely surrounded by hills. 
There's only one entrance through a narrow pass. We may have to fight our way through. It's possible. We will. Don't worry. The only question is time. Sergeant, three men, and a boy against a whole tribe with Tarang as their leader. What's your honest opinion, Inspector? Do you mean, is there a chance? Yes. Just that and nothing more. <laughs> we'll start at once. Lieutenant, we're leaving at once for Wilderness Valley. Full equipment and rations for three days. Yes, sir. We'll do our best, King. We'll do our best to save your master. The barracks sounded with preparations for the march during the next 15 minutes. And in half an hour, the full troop was ready to move out. At the gallop! The inspector rode at the head of the column with the captain. And winging along beside them was the great dog, King. Does that dog think he can keep up with us? We've got to let him try, Captain. It would break his heart if I sent him back. Far ahead, the level floor of Wilderness Valley was bathed in moonlight, and the men at the trading post watched and waited through the night. Even Ted had insisted on standing guard at one of the windows. Sergeant, maybe they won't attack tonight at all. Taranga has nothing to gain by waiting, Ted. I haven't seen a sign of one of them. It won't for a while. A while? The moon will be setting in a few minutes. After that, well... They'll be... They'll be able to creep right up to us, won't they? Your father says they don't have much ammunition, Ted. They'll try not to waste it. Yeah. I wonder if we'll be able to see them at all. We'll be able to see the flashes of their guns. All of them have knives and tommyhawks. If a lot of them were to rush us and break we'll in... We'll have to drive them back. Yeah, but five of us... Remember, our... we saw King get over the ridge. Yeah, that, that's right. Just keep watching, Ted. The moonlight faded from the valley. Now the men at the post could see nothing. There was no sound. They waited. Then suddenly... Here they come! Here too. Open fire and keep firing. It's the only way we can stand them off. A little band followed the sergeant's instructions. For half an hour, they blazed away into the night. They reloaded and fired again and again, surrounding the post with a wall of hot lead. Suddenly, they realized their fire wasn't being returned. The sergeant called a halt. That's enough. You think they've gone? I don't hear anything. We've stopped them once, but Taranga won't give up. Next time, they'll try to rush us. The sergeant was right. All was quiet at one moment, and the next, a wave of Indians rose out of the darkness, sweeping toward the building. The little garrison opened fire. The wave broke. Many of the Indians dropped to the ground, wounded. Many more retreated. But a few managed to reach the building. Come on, Eddie! Oh, you don't! Their tomahawks crashed against the windows, and they tried to crawl through the jagged openings. For a desperate moment, the men inside beat them off with the butts of their rifles. And then they were gone. It was silent once more. Another attack had been repulsed. I can't believe it. They've gone. Ben... Let me see that shoulder. I got nicked with a knife. Yes, I'll put a bandage on it. How about you, Al? I'm okay. Sergeant, I'll sure be happy when you put me in a nice, quiet jail. A little too early to talk about it, but if we manage to hold out, I don't think you'll go to jail. Well, how's that? People at the district will be grateful. They may want you to have another chance. How would you use it, Ben? I don't think you'd ever be on my trail again. Or mine. You both have courage when it comes to facing death. Why don't you show a little when it comes to facing life? That's a good idea. Hey! That's Ted. He's out in the storeroom. What's the matter, Ted? It's all right. I, I put it out. Put it, what out? This arrow. He was on fire. They shot it through the window. Taranga said he'd burn us out. Back to your post, men. The hours dragged by, and each minute was filled with peril. From flaming arrows, from bullets, from surprise attacks... Even the sergeant was desperate with weariness as the night wore on toward morning. A faint light rimmed the ridge to the east. It isn't over yet. I'll try once more before it's light. Shouldn't the troops be here by now? We can only expect them when we see them, Ted. I'm tired. Yes, I know you are. Lie down for a while. Oh, no. Not yet. I got a feeling I'd never get up. Here they come! Open fire! Another attack. The last before dawn. But now the men taking arms could hardly hold their guns level. And still the sergeant cheered them on. Still they fired. And still the Indians closed in. Now they fought fatigue instead of fear. How much longer could they hold out? The 
brightening sky above the eastern ridge was their only hope. But would the sunrise come too late to save them? Oh, it's no use. Hold on, boy. I'll try to, but I'm afraid I can't. Listen. Over. What? Was it? Is it really? Yes, Ted, the army, they're here. King made it. Wait, it's the hey, army. As the sun rose, the troops rode out of the pass and charged across the plain toward the post. The Indians, as weary as the defenders of the post, were half-hearted in their resistance. And in less than half an hour, the whole tribe had been rounded up. The inspector reined up in front of the post and dismounted to shake the sergeant's hand. Sergeant, I know what you've been through. I know what all of you have been through. Believe me, Inspector, it's good to see you. And it's good to see you alive, sir. I knew King would make it. Where is he? Did you leave him in Dawson? I couldn't make him stay there. He insisted on following us. He's on his way back here? Well, he was right behind us when we entered the pass. He'll be showing up any minute now. What's the matter down the trail there? Some of the Indians trying to get away? Let's find out. You can ride this trooper's horse, Sergeant. Right, sir. Steady there. Get up now! The Sergeant and the Inspector mounted and rode down the trail toward the opening of the pass. They could see the captain of the troop and several soldiers who had dismounted and were holding an Indian, a savage with a twisted, evil face who snarled his defiance. As the sergeant and the inspector rode up, a dog broke away from the group and ran toward them. It was King. King, old boy. Oh, King, fella. King was happy in his master's arms. He licked his cheek. Good boy. Good boy. The inspector walked on to the captain. Who is this man, captain? It's Taranga. He almost got away. He would have if it hadn't been for that dog. King? Yeah. Making a break for the ridge. The dog knocked him down and held him until we got here. Sergeant, tie him up. Yes, get him on board. So you not only brought us help, King, but you captured the man responsible for all this trouble. What can I say to you, fella? You've done it again, that's all. The case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Discover why Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice win the praise of many a He-Man Hollywood movie star. Try wheat or rice shot from guns yourself at breakfast tomorrow. These crisp, tender, king-sized grains are delicious. They're good for you, too. Furnish restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. For variety... Ask Mom to get both delicious kinds. One time, enjoy Quaker Puffed Rice. The next, eat Quaker Puffed Wheat. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of Ben Yancey's legacy. Well, when King and I stopped at Selkirk to visit a young couple we'd met on the boat, I didn't expect to land in the middle of an exciting adventure. It took mighty quick action on King's part to save my life. When you hear this unusual story... You'll know what I mean when I say I'm very thankful to have such an intelligent dog as King. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>